That's a lot of times what SharePoint gets presented as. It gets presented as this one single tool that's going to solve every single business problem that we have. And it's interesting to look at it that way because, I mean, it is. It's a multi-purpose platform that's going to solve different business needs. But it's important to remember that every organization is a little bit different. And so every organization is going to use different components of SharePoint. So while SharePoint is this very large um, platform with a lot of different components and pieces, it also should be noted that every organization is not typically going to be using every single component inside of SharePoint. So as we start looking at and getting started with working with SharePoint, it's usual for an organization to pick one aspect of SharePoint that they're going to delve into. They may be creating an intranet site, or they may be creating ad hoc sites for their teams to share documents and work with content. It's not necessarily that it's going to be the one size a solution that fits everything. Okay, so a lot of times I've heard it referred to as the Swiss Army knife of the business because once you get it in and you implement it, you can use it for multiple pieces. So it's a, a platform that's going to allow you to build out different solutions that you can then grow with and use over time. And as your organization grows, SharePoint can grow with your organization as well. Okay, so in the real world, there are a few common scenarios that people use SharePoint sites for. You have, um, and I'm going to show different examples of every one of these sites, um, an intranet solution. So that's a way to communicate data internal to your organization. A lot of organizations will create an intranet site using SharePoint. We also have an internet site, which is a public facing site. This was very popular. Um, when SharePoint 2010 was out. It's not as popular now with 2013, and I think as we get on to 2016 and different things like that, I think that we're going to see other methods that are becoming more popular for creating public-facing SharePoint sites, but there are still some out there. Um, collaboration, a way for teams to share content um, together, managing tasks, surveys, discussion boards, calendars, different things like that. Um, extranet, and that's uh, where people can go in and share content um, with external customers. And so I've seen this a lot, um, especially in Office 365, because Office 365 just naturally lends itself to this, where you can set up a site and securely share content with people that are outside of your org. Um, my sites and social have kind of become one component together. So whereas back in um, the early days of SharePoint, you had a my site and you went there to have this social experience, you're now starting to see um, some of the Delve components and different things like that where social just kind of is part of the entire overall experience. So you have Yammer sites, you can use that. You have different team sites where you can do things. And then of course, um, Delve, which is becoming more proactive with pushing information out and allowing people to integrate and work with that. So there's kind of this social component to it. So you put all of these pieces together and you end up with a whole combination of different tools you can use within the organization. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and show you just a couple of these and then we will dig into them a bit deeper um, as we go through and look at these different pieces. Here is a public facing SharePoint site. So this SharePoint site under the covers is all based off of SharePoint 2013. Um, this is actually the, the site at the company that I work with. Um, <laughs> So we can go in there, we have all of these different pages, we're pushing content, and this entire platform is based off of SharePoint 2013. So when we go in and edit pages and stuff like that, we're just editing them using this, uh, the standard SharePoint um, pages and different things like that. And so this is a public facing site. Again, there's a couple of them, them out there still, they're not as popular um, anymore as what they, what they had been in the past, but you can still see some of them out there. All right, here is an intranet site. So this would be an example of a company that's sharing information out to their site. So this is just pulling in. We've got sales metrics that are coming here. We have a calendar, different documents, content that's being pushed up. This is a highly branded site. So Kathy Dew is doing a session later today on branding it. You'll notice that this doesn't necessarily look like SharePoint out of the box because they've invested in branding and customizing it to make it look like the company colors. Um, there's different pages for each department, so you can kind of uh, drill down into the internet and find the information that you're looking for. So this is an example of a page um, where you can go in and get that content. And then each department, um, they have different content that's loading on their pages. So they're choosing to put some charts and graphs out there 
calendars and different pieces of, of information like that. We can also go on, go in and find different um, organizations and departments within the group where we can go in and get data from them. So I can go to the legal page, I can see their announcements, I see they've got a proposal that's uh, being displayed on the home page using Office Web Apps, and I've got different discussion boards. So this is a way that we can pull people together in the organization to share data and work with data um, together. Okay. We've also got some ways that we can do some document management, and we're going to dive into each one of these examples um, a little bit uh, later in the presentation. So there's different ways we can share document. Each page, this looks a lot more just like SharePoint, just like a basic, simple SharePoint site. We also have one where we can manage project tasks. We have different elements here. So these are all just common elements inside of SharePoint um, that we can use to build out a single solution. Back to the slides here. And so when we look at these, SharePoint is a platform. So I like to compare it to my little nine-year-old who has Legos all around the house. And that SharePoint is a big old bag of Legos and we're gonna have to use them to build out whatever our solution is going to look like. So there's a default behavior of a team site. If I want the team site to behave differently, if I want it to have different elements to it, so maybe a team site's gonna come out with just a simple task list. If I want it to have additional document libraries or if I want to have custom lists or anything like that, it's a framework so I can build out those custom components. And so if you look at a lot of the sessions that are coming out um, that are even gonna be at this conference, a lot of it is how do I take the things that are inside of SharePoint and use them to actually build out these robust solutions. So the session that's in here after this one is from Laura Rogers and she's talking about all of the out-of-the-box web parts that come with SharePoint and how can I put them on the pages to actually build out meaningful solutions and so they give us a lot of different Legos and then we have to learn how do we take those and put them together to build out a solution and so there's a lot of different ways that we can have out-of-the-box ready-to-go solutions so I'm talking about the video portals um, I think tomorrow afternoon, and that's a solution that they give us that is pretty much prefabbed and ready to go. But then there's other solutions that we're building that I just have a collection of Legos and I have to know what I'm trying to get to, and then I have to build out the different pieces and build out the solution that's there. And so that's one of the, the very powerful things about SharePoint is that you can build out many of these different solutions to get, to get the, end, the end results of what you're looking for. There's also many, many different ways to do SharePoint. So we have got dedicated servers. We have got a public cloud if we're using somebody's multi-tenancy. We've got private cloud where we're hosting it with someone or we have hybrid solutions. And this is really where the Office 365 conversation starts to happen. Um, so I'm gonna ask a couple questions about that. How many are using a SharePoint on-prem installation? Okay, and how many are using Office 365? Yeah, okay, not many. So. Office 365, that was the solution that Jeremy was talking about downstairs today, and that's gonna have a different set of features uh, because it's constantly innovating. So it's in what's called an evergreen environment, and what that's going to do is it's gonna allow for constant updates. Anything that's on-prem is going to update based on the regular update cadences. So the next release of uh, SharePoint will be SharePoint Server 2016, and that's gonna be coming out in um, end of, 2015, beginning of 2016 in beta, and then middle of the year. They just did a blog post that announced the dates on that. So you're gonna get very similar products, um, but some things are different. So there's gonna be certain components that are coming out a lot faster in Office 365 that you don't get on prem. <coughs> so one of the examples that I'm gonna show today is groups, and that's a pure Office 365 feature. It's not something that's necessarily available on prem. And so when you're going through the sessions, the reason that that's important is just that you understand and, and determine am I working with an on-prem only feature or an Office 365 only feature, and that you're able to kind of understand what the different things are for doing that. There's always differences and there's a lot of, like inside of SharePoint, there's probably a million ways to do the same thing and none of them are necessarily right or wrong, they're all just different. And so there might be some ways where you can do it this way inside of Office 365, but now if you come over here to SharePoint on-prem, you have to do it a little bit different because your feature sets aren't exactly the same. Um, so they have a couple of different tracks today. Most of the stuff in the information worker track is probably going to apply to both Office 365 and on-prem. 
Um, and then the things in the Office 365 track, you'll probably be surprised a lot of that will actually apply to on-prem as well as Office 365, but there will definitely be more features in that track that are going to be very specific to just using Office 365. So it's a very um, interesting mix between the two different feature sets that you can do, but they're pretty well, um, pretty well aligned. Um, and you can look at the things that are coming in Office 365, and some of those components will come out with the next release of SharePoint 2016. Okay. All right. Um, and the most important thing to remember through all of this is that one size does not fit all. Um, it's very easy for us to come up here and, and speak and start saying, here are all of the things you know, that we know about SharePoint and how we would use them and what the best practices are. But at the end of the day, it's really important to understand that one size doesn't necessarily fit all, and each organization is going to be a little bit different. And so when you look at, you know, should we be moving to Office 365? Should we be staying on-prem? Should we be doing hybrid? It becomes a combination of all sorts of criteria to look at and figure out what is the best solution. So there's a lot of different ways um, to look at it in different um, components of where we can go and how we can go about configuring our environments where nobody's solution is exactly the same from one to another. And they're going to be using different components and different pieces based on the business needs and the things that they're trying to specifically solve for. So we are going to jump in and do some demos here. So I think I'm going to start with um, some of the document collaboration demos so you guys can see some of the different things that you can do inside of SharePoint. And then I can also show you some of the different settings and different things that we can set up there. So this is a basic SharePoint site here that has a document library that we're accessing. And as we click on the content that's here, it's going to load up in Office Web Apps. Um, and it's going to show me a preview of my document. So I see that I've got nine pages of my document here. And I can actually come through and scroll through and see my entire document. So this is pretty powerful. If I want people to look at content without having to download it, I can get the previews of the content here. I can also come over here and I can print it to PDF. I can download a copy and I can embed information. If I get embed information, that's going to give me the HTML that I need to embed it on a page. So we saw on the engineering page that you went directly to that page and it would uh, show the document on the right pane. That's how we can do that through Office Web Apps. I actually have a site that I work with um, with one of our sales teams and we just did training and I've embedded their training, their PowerPoint presentation directly on the page so when they go there they don't have to do anything except for watch it directly on the screen. So there's different times where that becomes a really useful um, scenario that you, can, um, that you can use that for. Okay. We can also come over here and open it up in full screen, which is going to give me my Word Online, um, my Word Online view for, uh, for editing this. So I can even come over here and say edit the document. I can click that I want to edit it in Word or I want to edit it in Word Online. And I can come in, it's going to just take it into edit mode and let me get that document. So now I can go about making changes to the document as I'm there. And so what we're seeing inside of SharePoint right now is that um, the line between Office and the typical standard Office, Word, Excel, PowerPoint is starting to merge very closely with what we're doing in the browser. And it doesn't necessarily feel like I'm working with two different applications. They're merging together and we're able to use them together to build out a solution. So you're able to rely on the common features that your users are used to using um, to build out these solutions. So to them it feels like, well, I'm just using Word even though they may be accessing it online. We have different columns that are showing up in our library. This can be called metadata or list columns. You can also customize these. And so when we come up here to the library, and we talked about how we had a set of Legos that we could customize, we have these library settings that we can come in here and make changes to the library. So we've got a whole collection of basic settings that we can change, and then we can also go down and do things with columns. So we see that we've got these different columns that are here. We're tracking maybe ratings, um, so people can give it a five-star document, a like or a dislike. Um, but we could also come over here and create another column. And let's say that we had maybe a project site or something like that. And so the idea behind this is that we can take these different components and build on top of them to help us collect the data that we need. So I may be able to come over here and put project. And I can even come down and pick, um, let's see, multiple choice. 
And you know, I might be able to put in some project names that are here. And we can even take it farther than this and do a lookup to a list of projects that we have somewhere else. And so we can build out this solution. So where something like project name or something like that might not mean everything to every scenario, there might be certain scenarios where you want to classify the documents differently and know how could I, you know, how could I do this. So you might come over here. And you have these different components that you're adding here, different ways that you can set it up, and now it becomes a column inside of our library. And so this is the backbone of the library that we're working with that has all of the features that were there. And so we talked about how you get a different collection of Legos and you're trying to put it together and build out a solution. This would be a way that you would do it. By going in and tweaking all of the various settings, that's how you end up building your complete solution. So as you're looking at going about building solutions in SharePoint, you end up with this massively huge product and inside of it, there's many different ways to customize it and configure it to end up with all of these endpoint solutions. So as a group of people that are learning to do things within SharePoint, you really have to kind of jump in and understand what all of those different components are then take it back to your business and match your business requirements and figure out which levers do I need to pull, which configuration settings do I need to get to these end solutions. And so that's kind of the art of applying the business to the solution. And so we can build solutions all day long, but they have to relate to what the business is needing to do. We may understand what the business is needing to do, but then we need to dive into SharePoint and figure out what's the right combination of tools that I can pull together to build out these different solutions. And so over the next three days, the sessions that are here, especially in the information worker track and in some of the Office 365 track, are all about what are all of those different levers and things that I can do and things that I can configure to help me build out these solutions. And so you'll go in and um, Lori's doing one on content types right now. Laura's got one um, next on um, out of the box web part. She's got one later on workflows and building simple workflows with what you can get out of the box. And so they're, they feel almost like little disjointed things, but then you come and pull them together and that's how you build out complete solutions. Um, we can also do different things inside of the library. We'll go back to the library here. This one in particular has got ratings. So we can go in and say uh, what we think about the document. And the next time that service job will run, it will, it's awesome. Um, it will go ahead and update what the ratings are and it will show you how many people have rated the document and different things like that. We also have it checked out too. This is because with the different document libraries, we can go in and set out um, document management. Okay, I've already got that one, but let me try to check out a different one. Um, we can set out different properties so that we can um, take it and check it out so that no one else can use it. So let's say that we have got a collection of documents and we want to make sure that only one person is editing them at a time. SharePoint has this functionality built into it so that we can do that, so that we can say, I am checking out documents, so I'm logged in as Garth here. I've checked out this document, which means no one else can use this document while I have it checked out to me. So I'm working on that document. I'm going to be making changes to it. No one else can have it while I have it. So there's these built-in document management capabilities that are going to allow us to work together with the document. We also have versioning. Um, so versioning goes with check in and check out. So I can work on it, then I can check it in as a draft. Other people can review it, and then it can become a final version of the document. So there's a lot of different things that we can do with these documents inside of SharePoint that give us more than what a file server would give us. We don't have to take advantage of all of the features, but we can. And so by default, a lot of these features are turned off or more in an open mode, um, but you can go into the library settings, go into the versioning settings, and start changing these different settings so you can get the right combination of features um, that you need to work with your libraries. All right. We've also got some task management. I was gonna show you guys, this is a simple task list inside of SharePoint. This is a SharePoint 2013 feature. Um, where you get the timelines associated with a task list. So for every task list, you get this timeline, and you can go up to items and you can say add them to the timeline, 
and it's going to put them up on the top with the timeline. So I can put a couple of these um, and add them to the timeline. They'll show up. My timeline will be expanded. I can also come up here and I can say um, display them differently if I'd want to. So I can display it as a call out versus a bar and I can move them around on the screen. So I can get a really nice overview of, oops, of where we're at with the project. And so what we can do with this is we can build out a singular view of different things that we're doing. A lot of different organizations will put their milestones on the chart across the top and then have a full task list with all of their tasks. But it's a great way to manage tasks inside of SharePoint to stay on top of things. This is also beautiful because you can open it with Project. So I talked a little bit about how the lines between the actual applications that we're working with on projects and the, um, and the lines inside of SharePoint, those are getting a little bit blurred and we can go between them very easily. And so I can open this with project and it's going to take a couple minutes, but it's actually going to open up the entire project plan and then I'm able to add content there. Um, so we actually use this scenarios on one of the projects that I'm working on and I have a coworker who um, doesn't use project at all and he made all of his changes through the browser and I own the project plan and I made all of them through project and they were able to sync and we could both be simultaneously working on the project task at the same time using different tools. So this is another example of just some of the things, some of the ideas that you can do inside of SharePoint. Okay, checking the time. Okay, and that will just take a couple minutes to load and sync up, but what will happen is, is then anything that we change inside of project or anything that we change inside of the browser will sync back and forth. So that becomes a pretty powerful tool. This does not require a project server. This is just the basics of uh, project 2013 and SharePoint 2013 and the integration pieces that they have together. All right. There's some of the components there. We have it, we see that our um, timelines up at the top are also pulling in. So if we make changes again in either place, they will sync back and forth. Um, so very interesting things that we can do with that. How many of you guys are big project users? Anybody, a couple. Have you guys done anything with the integration? No, it's pretty cool. Um, this is one that just works. So with 2013 and project 2013, it just works together very easily. We haven't really had any syncing issues um, that I've seen when we've done it across a couple of different projects. So it's been a very good experience with that so far. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close that out. Okay, we also can do charts and graphs inside of SharePoint fairly easily. So again, this is blurring the lines between what we can do with Excel and what we can do inside of just SharePoint. So people expect to be able to go to a web page, get all of the content that they need about their organization, get all of the data that they need, get all the things that they're looking for. And so the Excel services web parts are different ways that we can do that. Um, there's also things with Power BI and there's a lot of new BI features that are out there with SharePoint that are also driving towards this. So there's a lot of, um, you hear the phrase crawl, walk, run. And so there's a lot of different things that we can do just with SharePoint out of the box and we can move up to using Excel, then we can go as far as using some of the new advanced BI capabilities. And so there's a lot of different ways to get data um, in a contextual way that's relevant for people. So they wanna be able to see the data quickly and easily so that they can go about, get the content that they need and build out the solutions that they need and get the right context with the right data so that they can go perform the right action. So working with SharePoint is all about pulling together these solutions to do it. And so when you just get started with SharePoint, and let's say I'm the SharePoint administrator here, you know, I might wanna go over here and if I just go and create um, a simple SharePoint site, might actually need to log in as a different user. There we go. I'll, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna create a new site here and show you what it comes like out of the box. So you see, let's just do a, we're gonna come down here, oops. Oh, I didn't do an administrator. Okay, have that ready to go now, filled in all the fields. 
we're gonna create a simple SharePoint site. We're gonna give that a few minutes to kick off and see, and you guys will see what does a site look like right when it's created. So my site is provisioning different things along those lines. So when you're starting with SharePoint and where I say you have all of these components of how you need to build it together, what I've been showing you so far has been finished solutions. So you've seen pages that have already been built and designed and things have been added to the pages. But when you first get started, it doesn't necessarily look like that. And so it's provisioning off on the back end. We're going to give that just a second to keep going. And then I can show you what that default site looks like and then show you some of the ways that you can actually customize the site, change the way that it looks, um, and we can do different things with that. So we'll give that just a couple of minutes to kick off. It's, it always seems like it takes such a long time when you're doing demos because you're standing up here waiting for it to go. Does anybody have any questions while we're waiting for that to kick off? Nope, okay. Might take a couple minutes. We'll come back to that one in a few when it is completed. So we'll let that go. Okay. So we've kind of shown off some of these different things. Now we can talk through what are some of the common roles inside of a SharePoint implementation. So if you're looking at an organization and there's going to be common roles that you can go after and look at and do. And so some of the most common ones are a SharePoint administrator. This is going to be somebody that keeps. Um, the server up and going, someone who's got, you know, working in a data center, keeping the farm up and going, installing everything, keeping the packages up to date, um, making sure that everything's there. You usually have a designer component. This is going to be someone who's looking uh, very much at the UI. How does this look and feel? What are the different things in the organization? Um, a lot of times inside of organizations, I've seen <coughs> HR or marketing control that. Um, how does it look? What does it need to be branded with? What are the different customizations that we have to make? Um, developers are going to be that group of users who, when SharePoint doesn't do what it needs to do out of the box, and I need to customize it even farther, how am I going to pull together another set of tools, um, usually Visual Studio, to build out custom solutions to use inside of SharePoint? So that's going to be your group of developers that takes things um, beyond what you typically can do out of the box. Um, you've got your business analyst and your site administrators. So your site administrators are going to be the people who can do everything with SharePoint out of the box. So they're going to be the people that usually are responsible for owning a SharePoint site or a solution. They're going to make their changes to the site, go in and change everything that they can out of the box, build it out to be what it needs to be, manage the permissions for the site so you can control who has access to what site um, versus other sites. And they're typically... Um, teamed up with or play a dual role of a business analyst and that's somebody who understands what is the business trying to do with SharePoint. And so you have a person who understands the organization, understands the business, and you want them to be able to help um, guide you in what you're doing within your SharePoint sites. Uh, you also have your power users. Those are some pe sometimes people who work with the business analyst, team up with them. They don't necessarily control the site permissions, but they can, can configure everything out of the box. They're not your typical users because they'll actually go in and do some more complex things. Um, in organizations, I typically see the role of power users, site administrators, and business analysts kind of can be rolled up into one, and they become your organization champions that are doing um, and managing SharePoint solutions within the org, and they're kind of responsible for managing different components. And so the breakdown of those three users is typically based on your organization um, and how your organization is structured and just the basic culture of your organization to figure out, you know, are there, are there people that are maybe not necessarily in IT that are going to be able to build out solutions for me? Are those going to be power users? And are those, do those come from the business? Do we have business analysts that specifically just gather the requirements and do them, and then we have someone else implement them? It just kind of depends on the organization structure and how your teams work together. Um, and then finally, we have end users. And these are the people that are going to be able to go back um, and just use the solution. So these are your uh, true consumers of SharePoint. This is your entire organization. If you have an intranet site, this would be everybody in the organization because they go to the site to consume data. Um, so these are typically the roles that make up different SharePoint organizations. So I'm assuming everybody in this room fits into one or more of these roles inside of there. Does anybody work at an org that has every one of these roles 
in it. It usually has to be a very large org with a lot of people to have every one of those. How many people wear more than one of these hats on this list? Yeah, probably most everybody. Yeah, um, which there's nothing wrong with that. In most organizations, SharePoint is designed so that you can wear more than one of these hats and you can keep it going. If you're using an Office 365 <coughs> administration, your roles change a little bit. You still need a SharePoint administrator, but that's someone who's going into central admin, um, changing configuration settings, and is most likely submitting tickets to Microsoft if there's an issue. But the role of a SharePoint administrator changes when you are using Office 365 versus using on-prem because it's just a different environment. When you're using Office 365, you're really supplementing your team with Microsoft engineers who are doing that server administration for you. Um, awesome, so we can go back now and see if my page has loaded. Yep, here it is. So back to this demo. This is what you get when you get SharePoint out of the box. So we showed a couple of completed solutions, um, but now we're gonna pull up a site that just comes out of the box. So you see as we're doing it and it comes out of the box, we have a news feed, we have documents where I can drag and, and drop my content into it, and we have a getting started box across the top which is gonna allow me to do certain tasks if I wanted to. Um, so I can come over here and I can start to work with these. I can also come up to my gear and go to site contents. If I go to site contents, whoops, I hit site settings. Again, if I go to site contents, I'm gonna see all of the components that are part of my site. If I wanted to have additional components, I can come over here and add an app. There's two types of apps I can add. There's the out of the box apps, so your task list, your calendar list, document library, different things along those lines. Or you can also go to the SharePoint store and you can add apps <coughs> from there. So this is where you're gonna get um, a lot of our vendors that are sponsoring this event actually have apps that are in the SharePoint store that you can work with. So you can get these different apps and put them there. So um, there's like a, uh, let's see, a contact management one that I'll show sometimes, like business contact tracker. So if I know I need to build out a solution to do something, I have this ability to come get these apps. When we talk about customization, this is what we mean inside of SharePoint. If you're a SharePoint site administrator, um, in most cases you're gonna be given something plain and vanilla, then you have to take it and add all of the different components that you want, and then once you add the components, you have to go into each one of those settings and start to change and tweak the settings so that you can get what you want. I am going to cancel out of here, okay? So you have the different components here on my site. Different things that I can add. I can also use the tools there to help me add stuff. So we see I'm working on a deadline here. I could, I could click this button and it's going to actually create a task list and a calendar library for me. So I can add them and they're gonna go on the site for me. Um, so they're trying to make it as helpful as it can be to let me get the content that I need for my site pretty quickly. So you see my site is starting to transform a little bit because now I have this project summary on the page. I can remove this all together if I don't necessarily want that. That's security trim, so if somebody's just a consumer of the site, they're not gonna see a button that lets them change anything. Um, but I have this site and I can even come up here and edit the page and now I can build out all of the components that I need. So I can do very simple things like coming up and changing the layout. Um, I wanna make it, you know, maybe I want a bunch of different columns there. And I want stuff on the bottom. So I can come out and I can change the way this looks like. So when we talk about we have these different components and these different Lego pieces and we're pulling them together to build a solution, this is what this means. So being that site administrator that can go in and change things, these are the types of tools that we use and the things that we learn to go about and make these changes. And there's a scale of very, very simple changes that I can make all the way up to pretty complex. Um, you can even do things like insert JavaScript and different things like that in the pages. I know Mark Anderson is here, Mark Rackley is here this week and they talk a lot about doing that. So it's really no code solutions for doing it, but it's not necessarily as simple as editing the page and just typing text in. 
So there's different ways to get to that end result. And the end result inside of SharePoint is just having a solution that makes sense for your organization and you're building it using all of these different pieces and tools. Um, there's also a lot of things you can do in 2013 with the look and feel of the site. So if we even come over here and go to change the look, we can do some different things with how the site is laid out. So we can come over here and you know pick a different, um, a different site. We can also change the background image if we wanted to. We've got these different color schemes. Um, it's pretty horrendous. So uh, they did not do away with our ability to make ugly sites. We can still do that. Uh, but you can go in. These are actually much better than previous uh, themed versions. I just happen to be picking all of the extremely horrible ones. Um, we can remove the image, and then it's just styled <coughs> back to what you expect. So we can do these different things with the different accent colors. We can also change the fonts. So this is something that's new inside of 2013 where you can go down and easily say, I want to change the default fonts for my site, as well as the site layout. Um, so we have Seattle and Oslo. Um, Seattle is the quick launch on the left-hand side. Oslo actually removes the quick launch. Um, and well, it removes the top navigation and puts the quick launch in place of the top navigation. But we can come over here and try it out, and that gives us a lot more real estate on our sites. And so the whole uh, concept behind you know, being introduced to SharePoint and going after different things inside of SharePoint is this ability to go in and take all of these different elements that are in the site and use them to build out these different solutions. So I'll give it just a second. Just another second. And we can see what the site looks like. So we can say keep it. And then it's going to change my site for me. So now when we see that we go to the home site, we're going to see the basis of the site. And we have all that extra space. So now here's where we'd want to go in and say, you know, what do I want my users to do? Maybe we don't really need a news feed. So we can say, I don't, you know, I don't need this in my solution. So I'm going to come over here and delete it. And you know, maybe documents are important, but maybe tasks, maybe the task list is really important to our team. So we could come over here and say insert uh, web part, and we have all of these different web parts that we can put on the page. So when we start looking at how do we build out these solutions, you really have to start with what does the business need? A lot of times I'll even take, um, I'll, I'll go into, I use Balsamic a lot. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Balsamic, but it's a, a wireframing tool and I'll go in and say okay if I was the business and I wanted to use this site how would I build it out and what would I what would I draw to make it be a very good solution and then I just go back into SharePoint and start building out all of these different features the things to do inside of SharePoint when you come down to it are actually pretty simplistic to do um, you know editing a page and dragging and dropping and putting things on the page is pretty simplistic and you can follow it with the menus the real trick is understanding what are the end results when I do this and how does it translate to the business problem. And so that's what this conference is going to be full of, is giving you these tips and tricks of how do I, um, in essence, how do I manipulate SharePoint to get to that end result that I need in the ways that are according to best practice that aren't going to trip me up as I'm making all of these changes. So these are some of the different things that we're doing um, inside of SharePoint. So we are going to come over here, and I can add, um, I'm going to go down and add the task, because I think what I said I'm going to add. So I'm going to add that. And so it's got now, it's awesome, because I've got two timelines. So next, remember we said SharePoint is all about taking these things and customizing them. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say edit the web part. Come over here and see if I can keep editing. And I'm going to change it so I'm not showing the timeline. And now I'm just going to be showing the task list. Whoops. I'm going to just be showing the task list. Okay, so now I see my tasks are down there. So SharePoint has all of these default out of the box behaviors, and then we're going to just be manipulating them to continue to build out the solutions that we need, with the end results being. Um, 
the types of example pages that I was showing you before. Like we can go down and get all of these different types of solutions. These are all things that someone has taken the time to build. Okay. Um, different components there. Um, I'll show you guys that one in just a second. But here's, you know, different sites that are there. And as we go look at, you know, what did legal do on their site to make it, um, to make it match what they needed? They put, you know, a description. They put some announcements. They had the embedded document there. Um, and some discussions, whereas different, you know, other sites, research and development may have done something different on their site. So they're all using the out of the box SharePoint components. They've got just a Visio diagram um, on their site, which is going to show them those different components. And then they've got documents as well as announcements. So every site can be a little bit different as you start to pull together these different pieces. And so SharePoint, when people start saying you know, SharePoint is this framework to do stuff, that's really what they mean by that. And SharePoint is a Swiss Army knife because I can have one solution, but I can build out what HR needs at the same time of building out what finance needs if it's not the same. Uh, but there's a lot that we can do to make it simplistic and easy. And so that's what you're going to get a lot of in the rest of the sessions today um, and throughout this week. Penny Coventry has also got a couple of sessions where she's doing some more advanced things. So taking um, scenarios around some of just the basic concepts that I've talked about today and then putting those scenarios to work using all of the different features. So, so those are some of the really good sessions that you can attend to kind of get more information and ideas around different things. Um, that you can do. All right. So the different conference tracks that they have, um, IT Pro, those are really going to be around um, keeping the servers up and running and happy. There's a lot about performance and doing different things like that. So if that's you know where your sweet spot is and different things like that, I, I would venture to say that at this conference it has absolutely the best IT Pro track I've seen at any conference anywhere. Um, just amazing speakers there. Uh, same with the developer track. There's a lot of good developer content that's out here. I know uh, Jeremy and Vess, I think, are even doing a post session full day at the last day of different things you can do with development. The business track is really going to speak to those soft things inside of SharePoint. So the whys. Why should I do this? How do I do this in my organization? more along, you know, what is the value? What return of investment can I get with different things? Those are the types of sessions you're going to get in the business track, which is, again, I, uh, in terms of conferences, this truly is my favorite conference. Uh, the speakers here are all incredible, so you're really not going to go wrong with whatever session you pick. Um, it's just kind of trying to understand the different pieces that you want um, to get into it. The information worker track is going to be all of the things that I can do uh, basically with SharePoint out of the box. So if you wanted to take that vanilla site that we created and now I need to get from a vanilla site to working solutions that I can manage within my organization, that information worker track, those two tracks that are there are going to be all tips and tricks to use those different kinds of things. But you may go into a session and say, okay, this isn't really what I need, this isn't something I'm going to use, but that's okay because if you look at the depth of SharePoint, there's a lot of things that you can do inside of SharePoint. And no two solutions are ever really the same. They're just gonna be using different components. So there's a lot you can learn in the information worker. The Azure track is a new track this year. So those will all be sessions focused on um, Azure and getting that set up, as well as the Office 365 track. The Office 365 track is going to be a combination of all things inside of Office 365. So you might find some sessions that apply to um, some things that you can do both on uh, an on-prem environment as well as Office 365. If you're um, curious, like if you find a session that you really like and it's in that track but you're not sure, like maybe you're using an on-prem environment, you could always go and ask the speaker before the session how much of this will specifically apply to on-prem if I'm doing it. Um, same with the information worker track. Most of that stuff will apply both to on-prem and Office 365 just because of the nature of the product. Um, so there's a lot of amazing content that you're going to get here that you wouldn't necessarily get um, other places. And all the sessions are recorded, um, so you should be able to go back and get those as well after the fact. And I think we can call it a session and you guys can go get coffee and head out to the next one.